everyone, welcome to another exciting tutorial. I am Tyken, and today I want to show you Blockmensch. This is the default tool I use for making any kind of models in Minecraft, and it is a dream. It, it works very well, it's intuitive, and it's not too complicated compared to some of the other 3D modeling programs. It's pretty much designed for Minecraft, but also for anything else you could possibly use. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go to New Project. You have a couple of options here. Um, if you're doing it for just basic Minecraft, you have Java and Bedrock Edition, whatever you're making it for, you're, you're probably going to go with the top option or whatever option suits you. Then it's going to give you a bunch of different options on what to do with your block. Doesn't really matter. I always turn off ambient occlusion just because it kind of gives a weird shadowing to some of the blocks. If you accidentally leave it on and you get some weird textures, that's why. So then you get this nice little 16 by 16 grid. You're not locked into 16 by 16, but I keep it that way just because it's very easy to know if I'm going out of the bounds of traditional Minecraft. And it also kind of gives you a vague idea of the normal sizes of everything. Uh, you can change it up in your settings. I forget where specifically. I want to say stabbing? Oops. Yeah, grid resolution, shift resolution, and control resolution. Uh, I bumped up the control resolution, and essentially whenever you hold shift or control, it allows you to move things more than just one block at a time. Or I wouldn't say more than one. It, it gives you finer control. Because this way, if you move it, it only moves one at a time. If you hold shift, it kind of moves half a block at a time. And I turn mine way up on control, so you can see it's practically free moving. It's moving at, I think... 0.5 at a time so it really gives you that extra finer control when you need it so let's just say you saw my last video announcing the Garaduku Genesis and you saw the sideways stairs and slabs and you're like you know what I really want that in my texture pack uh, so the easiest way to do that is go to your sizing tools after adding a cube that's the S yes, by the way if you needed it and you just drag it all the way to the normal size. So that's 16 by 16 standard Minecraft block size. Now slabs are half of a normal block, so that's going to be 8 high. Boop. And there you go, your slab for whatever you want it to do. Let's just say you want, you can, you can have your own custom textures, by the way, for any of these. But let's just say you want to replace the ones that are already in here. So you're just gonna go traditional, you're gonna look for oak, oak uh, planks. So you're gonna make an oak slab. And then you make sure you have all your cubes selected, in this case one, and apply to any untextured faces. And already it throws everything down pretty well. However, if you want it to, you can change it around. You can see here, like maybe you don't want it to look that big, or maybe you wanna like cut it down. You can, you can modify this however you want. Uh, of course, this also supports the basic controls that every other program has, Control z and Control y to undo or redo whatever you want. So again, learning all your shortcuts makes life much easier in any program you're using. So okay, you have your basic block. This is super quick, super easy to do if you wanted to throw it together in literally any of your texture packs. Uh, so then what you do is you have the display button over here. And what this does is it shows you how your block looks everywhere else, not just on the ground. So in this case, you can see it in your hand, and this looks kind of horrific. So let's let's scale this down a bit. Um, let's see. I don't think... Oh, hey, shift works. Nope, that still does it by increments of 0.1. So we'll just drop this down to half the normal size and see how that looks. Just copy and paste all of those. And there you go. It's a little bit more sizable in your hand. You can even keep dropping it lower. Let's just say 2.5. Until it looks just right. However you want it to. And then we're going to pull it up a little bit so it's not clipping into the hand. Kind of probably want it like on top of the hand. Yeah, just a little bit. And then you can do some other cool things like rotation. Like, oh, hey, it's, it's kind of at an angle in your hand. Or uh, it's not quite flat, so it's kind of like a like the corner is in your hand. And there you go, perfect. The cool thing is you can copy this setting and then paste this setting, so like it'll look the same in your left and right hand. And then it also shows you what it looks like if a zombie's holding them, an armor stand's holding it. 
You can also do it like, oh, this is what it looks like in your hand. And the cool thing is when you when you copy the settings, it, it kind of helps across the board. But just say that doesn't look quite right. So you're just going to kind of scooch it over a little bit. And you're like, okay, I want it to look more like it's towards the other, oops, other direction. There you go. So it's kind of pointing this way now. And again, you can just copy these settings and apply it to the other hand. Bam. You can kind of see no problems at all. Uh, you can even have it on your head. In this case, you kind of look like Bane. Uh, I like to just drag it up a little bit until it is just resting on top of the head. Perfect. But of course, you can resize this so it looks really tiny if you wanted it to for whatever reason. So you have like, ooh, a little tiny, tiny little button on your head. So again, you can make this look however you want. It's not locked in anything. Again, you can also have it in your head if you really wanted it to. And then, of course, you have it on the ground, what it looks like. That's kind of massive. So it's also clipping into the ground a little much. So I'm going to drag it up until its downward bounce doesn't quite touch the ground. So a little bit lower. And then this thing is, again, way too big. So we'll just drop it down to 25. Oops, should have probably done that first. There we go. Perfect. So like whenever you toss it on the ground, that's exactly what it looks like. And now the item frame. This is the important part. Uh, as you recall, the, the slab has to be in an item frame in order for this to work. So what we're going to do, first of all, is I'm going to bump this up to, I want to say, 2. So just copy, paste, bam. And then, of course, we need to rotate it to about 90 degrees. Oops, that was a 0. There you go. It's practically done already. Now, you're going to have to toy with this a little bit because of the item frames. It, I do believe how I did it, it clips into the block a little bit because the item frame, like this isn't an accurate representation. That or it's because I modified my uh, item frames. But you can kind of see just based on this one, if it, if it doesn't quite touch the block, just redo it, go into the block a little bit until it looks flesh. If you see this clipping where like the, the, the white or whatever block you have on top of it, it looks like it's kind of fighting or struggling with the other one. It's called clipping, in case you were wondering. Uh, then you need to pull it out some. So again, just, just toy with it until you get your, your, your measurements just right. Uh, use the finder tool if there's too much space. And then you can even just type in the number manually if it's just not quite good enough. And then that's it. It's perfect. You have your slabs that you can put on walls now. And you can do the exact same thing with stairs. Now, it's very easy. All you have to do now is go to Export Model. You do have to name it explicitly what the model is in Minecraft. So in this case, it's Oak Slab. That simple. And you're done. Uh, we will just put it in models right here. You can see all my other ones. Uh, some of these are confusing, but some of them are very straightforward, like the stone brick slab that I did in my video. And there you go. All you have to do is go into your texture pack, and then, or if you're playing traditional Minecraft, uh, I think you need to download the, pretty much the assets folder, essentially make it into a texture pack, and then just replace it in the models folder. Uh, it's models blocks so there's a models folder a block folder without the s and then you throw everything in there and it should work no problem i will put more details in the description below if you need them and you can also do the exact same thing with items obviously you can't really place items down on the ground except for the ones that are placeable and you can modify those textures and models as well um so yeah you can do a lot of interesting things i've been so into this because i've been finally able to add all of the things in Minecraft that I've been wanting to see for ages with pretty much only one mod and a little bit of work. So I hope you all have all enjoyed this little tutorial. I hope it helps a lot. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the description below and I will try to add whatever I can to the details and to the answer below. And I hope I see you guys soon.